Gary Busan and welcome to our latest edition of Soma. Leo to Nasoma, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. And we're going to ask this question, why did Jesus suffer? Why did Jesus suffer? What made him go to the cross? What made him go through difficult things? We're going to read these, this passage of scripture from 1 Peter 3, 17 through 18. Inesema hivi. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. If there's one passage of Scripture that you need to probably use to share with a friend about the gospel, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 might be the best one to explain as a lot of details about it. So now, wakati una soma biblia ni kitu muhimu sana kuona, words that repeat, so that way you can determine what's the main message here, right? We see these words here, suffer, repeat. So that means when you see words that repeat, often that lets you know what the main point is. So suffering is the main point here. Peter says, for it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So we notice this word here, better, like, hey, it's better to suffer for doing good. Sometimes when you do good, you suffer. It's not always that, una fanyu uzuri akunubaya apana. But like any Peter and Assembly Afadali who suffer for doing good, why is it better? Because if you can if you read from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 all the way down to verse 17, you'll see that Peter makes this explanation that you will be blessed by God if you're willing to suffer for doing good. Because Peter and, and the people that he's writing to were living in a very hostile environment, people who hated them for their faith in Christ. And so now Peter's telling them to be willing to suffer for doing good, because they'll be blessed for it. And not just that, that it also helps lead people to Christ. And they always need to be prepared, he says in 1 Peter 3.15, to make a defense for anyone who asks them a question about their faith. And as they do that, they might suffer. And that's what Peter's saying, be willing to do that. Be willing to do that. And then he says in verse 18, for Christ also suffered. So sometimes we suffer, we say, Kwanini, ata Yesu ame suffer. Analewa vile tunapita. And if he suffered, and if we follow him, and he's our Lord, we can also expect to suffer. But let's talk about Christ's suffering here in verse 18. And let's see that the blessing that it brings us. It says here, for Christ also suffered. Well, let's first of all talk about what does it mean that Christ suffered? Well, I want to remind you in the, old, in the, the New Testament and the Gospels, there was the, Jesus was scourged. That's a big thing. It's a kizungu word that means that Jesus was scourged. It was a really terrible thing. He was brought to the middle of like a court. Picture in your mind, like if you're in Kenya, like a place like um, Uhuru Park. That's a big, wide open kind of place where everybody can gather and see. And now you have a, a person like Jesus, who was a prisoner that was brought to this post. He got on the ground. They tied him up with a rope there. And then what they had him do was get down on his knees. And he sat there, down on his knees. And now what happened was there was a professional Roman soldier behind him. And now this soldier, he would hold like a kamanyaunyo, a whip. And this whip had nine pieces of leather, like they came out of it. And on the end of these pieces of leather was a piece of bone or um, metal or even pieces of glass sometimes that were on the ends of these. And these things were shaped in like the shape of like a cat's claw, nikamayapaka. And you know, like kamapaka, whenever they scratch you, they dig in with their claws and they stay in. And these would act like almost hooks. So this soldier would hit this on the back of the person that was down on the ground being scourged. And these, these, Claws then would, they called this the cat of nine tails, right? Because it was in the, sh these, cause of the shape of these things on the end. These, the cat of nine tails would dig into the back of the person being scourged, and then they would now have to rip it out. And as they ripped it out, pieces of flesh, pieces of uh, nyama, even sometimes pieces of organs and bones would all come out as this soldier pulled it back. And it would cause excruciating pain to the person being whipped. They, history tells us that 40 whips of this cat and nine tails led to death. And so the Romans didn't want to kill the prisoner. They just wanted to torture them. So they would hit them 39 times. 
So that was one less so they wouldn't die according to, you know, their belief. And then, so Jesus went through all this. This was excruciating pain. Usually by the time that someone was being done being whipped by the cat of nine tails, you could see their spine, you could see their bones in their rib cage. Sometimes they, they could, you could see their organs exposed. Oftentimes the cat of nine tails would even take pieces of lung or, or, or kidney or whatever was back here. Whatever organs is close to these back bones here, those would be exposed and even damaged. And now after Jesus suffered in this way, we also know that he had a crown of thorns, right, that was on his head. And these are big, huge thorns, not soft ones, but big ones that would go and they, they stabbed him into his head that would have been extremely painful. And then on top of that, you remember that, of course, we know that Jesus went and died on the cross. And after being scourged, he was told um, to carry this cross up to, the, up to Golgotha. And this is a big, heavy piece of wood. This is not something easy to carry. Jesus, of course, after being beaten and scourged here, really struggled to carry this. So a man, of Simon, a man named Simon of Cyrene, I may say, dear Yesu kubebem salaba. And then wakati wamefika ju, we know that the Bible says that there was nails put into his hands and to his feet. There was three, three nails total. Those nails are big. They're about the size of your thumb if you were to hold it up. Um, those nails went into his wrist because historically for the, the nails to be put into someone's um, hand, like a palm of their hand, the, their weight would just rip, you know, rip them off the cross and they had to put them back up there again. So they most likely put it through their wrist where there was bone strong enough to hold them. And then also they put their feet together and one nail goes through two feet. And it was really painful what Jesus went through here. This kind of describes the suffering of Jesus. And not to mention him being mocked, him being spat upon. Also brought before he died, they put a spear into his side and water came pouring out of his body. There was a lot of pain. Jesus also, of course, was abandoned um, by all the disciples. Jesus suffered. And that's what he went through. Now, the question is, how many times did he suffer? The scripture says once, for Christ also suffered once. Now, this is important because in the Old Testament times, we know that the, the priest, when he made many different offerings, they would go and like, they had like this place where they would, they had like a place where they burned, um, all, uh, burned offerings and stuff that people would bring. They would bring them cows and goats and um, sheep and um, birds even, and they would burn them in, in this altar before people could now go into the temple, right, to worship the Lord. Things had to pass to the fire before they could now go in there. And so they would make offerings sometimes daily, sometimes weekly, monthly, seasonally, um, you know, even for special occasions. Also, there's special offerings once a year. Um, but there was constant need for sacrifice. But Jesus' sacrifice was just done one time. And I think that's significant because his blood was pure. And we'll see that it says that he was the righteous for the unrighteous. Jesus was righteous. His blood was perfect. His sacrifice was done once. I may, I may suffer maramoja. Once for all time. We don't need another sacrifice. We don't need to add anything else in order for us to have the forgiveness from God for our sins. Instead, the blood of Jesus is, sacri- is, is sufficient. The suffering of Jesus is sufficient for all time. In fact, just remember that this suffering of Jesus was so extreme that it obviously led to his death. We see that here. Now, why did Jesus suffer? The Bible says here, four sins, right? Four sins. He was the righteous for the unrighteous. So the unrighteous, we see that is us, right? The plural here is us, human beings that put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus was the righteous one who suffered in our place for us as unrighteous people. Now, and this is what we call, this is a big substitution. The unrighteous was paid for by the righteous Jesus. I'll write this down, substitution. There's a big word in theology called substitutionary atonement. In other words, God is not pleased with our sins at all because he's holy and righteous and cannot be near 
anybody that has sin. He has to punish it as a holy God. And so what needs to happen then is he needs to he just needs to put his wrath on sin. And if we've sinned, we deserve the wrath of God. But Jesus then dies in our place on the cross as the righteous one in the place of the unrighteous, and it satisfies the wrath of God to where now God can give us grace. God can give us mercy. God can forgive us. God can justify us. We can now go into heaven because the righteous Jesus died on the cross. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He, Jesus, became sin who knew no sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. The righteous Jesus dies, suffers in the place of the unrighteous, and then now the righteousness of Jesus comes into us as believers. This, again, this is another great substitution um, on our behalf. This is a powerful truth that we see in the scriptures right here, and we praise Jesus for this. I want to make sure to understand clearly, when I'm talking about us being unrighteous, that means our sin, right? Just to kind of help illustrate this a little bit, have you ever lied? If you've ever lied, then you are a liar. Have you ever stolen anything? If you have, then you are a thief. Have you ever hated somebody? Jesus says if you ever hate somebody, is a murderer, right? Not with your hands, but in your heart. In order to murder someone, you have to hate them in your heart. Therefore, that is, you are a murderer. I'm not going to be able to finish writing all that. And then next, on top of this, if you ever said God's name in vain, you know, kwa mahali, ai mungu, ai Jesus, ai ngai, ai mwathani, you say whatever these words are, and then you, that makes you a blasphemer. I'm not going to be able to write that down, but a lot. So now as we see that here, we are liars, thieves, murderers, blasphemers. Also, come si chana tembea, unangliye sana unokuliye na macho. Jesus says that that is equal to adultery. And so that doesn't mean that when we find you adultery, you know, with your body, but instead with your mind. It's, adultery starts in the mind. You have to lust. And then from lust, now we end up most life. It works its way out fully. You do it with your body. You commit adultery. And so as we stand, we're liars, thieves, murderers, blasphemers, and adulterers. We are totally unrighteous. We cannot go to heaven unless there is a substitution for our sins. So praise Jesus that he suffered once for sins, the righteous to the unrighteous. And as good as that is, it gets better. The Bible says that he might bring us to God. Bring us to God. We get to have, we get to go into the presence of God because of the suffering of Jesus. This is another reason why Jesus suffered. So he can bring us to God. We can go now near the presence of God. Hebrews tells us, the book of Hebrews tells us that we can boldly approach the throne of grace. We do not have to go through anybody else anymore in order to get to God. We do not have to go through um, Mary or some man of God or some person of prayer or any other person like that. No saint. We can go directly to Jesus, be, uh, to God because of the suffering of Jesus Christ. This is a powerful thing while we're here on earth. Pray directly to God. Ask him for things. God is, wants to hear your prayers. He loves you. And that is made possible because of the suffering of Jesus. But not only that, we can be brought into the presence of a holy God, even though we are sinners because the righteous Jesus suffered for our sins um, for unrighteous people, right? As us as unrighteous people. So therefore, we can go into the presence of God. Psalm 1611 helps us understand a little bit better how amazing this particular um, blessing from Jesus is. The Bible says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures evermore. The fullness of joy is in the presence of God. And that pleasure of being in the fullness of joy in the presence of God lasts forevermore. That is something that we'll be able to fully experience when we are in heaven. We may not understand how big of a deal it is that we might be brought to God, but praise God for that. We have that available to us. So why did Jesus suffer? He suffered to bring us to God. Why did Jesus suffer? He suffered once for our sins, 
so that we can now be brought to him, to be in his presence. This, again, is an is a idea of Christianity is about a relationship. God wants to be with us. We can be brought now to near to him. Adam and Eve were chased out of the garden, away from the presence of God. But now, because of the suffering of Jesus, we can now be brought to God in his presence. And that is a powerful, powerful thing for us to remember in the scriptures. And this is another reason why we worship Jesus. He's the main focus here. The resurrection proved that God was satisfied with the righteous Jesus' suffering and sacrifice up until death for our sins, that he vindicated Jesus by raising him from the dead. And we can see that that's a powerful thing for us to remember. So worship Jesus for this and be willing to suffer just as Jesus did because it's better, right, for us to do this. There's blessing. Jesus was exalted at the right hand of God for being willing to suffer for the will of God. We also will be exalted, being given blessing for that if we're willing to suffer. And you can be motivated to do that by looking at the suffering of Jesus and remembering that there is a huge blessing to be brought to God through him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today and we say thank you for the suffering of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that he suffered once for sins, for us unrighteous people that are liars, thieves, murderers, blasphemers, adulterers, people who do not deserve to be in your presence. Lord, you would chase us away from you if not for the suffering of Jesus unto death on the cross. We praise you for that. Thank you that we can be in your presence where there is the fullness of joy forevermore. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.